Grace and peace to you and welcome to our penultimate Wednesday evening uh, prayer service. Today we're going to be focusing on probably the most popular prayer in the Western world anyway, which is the Lord's Prayer. And so we'll hear two versions of the Lord's Prayer because it appears twice in the Gospels, twice and only twice, uh, Jesus gives it to us. And it's, you'll notice, notice in uh, slightly different versions in each one. The one from Matthew, the second one we read, is the one everybody's more familiar with. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Spirit of God, stir on us, open our hearts, and free our voices so we can come to you with our authentic selves, bearing our soul, our joy, our anxiety, our pain, our longing, and our hope. As you heard and responded in grace and love to the prayers of your faithful servants, Hannah, Jonah, Nehemiah, Peter, Cornelius, and your Son, our Savior, Jesus. So we, too, long for you to hear and respond to our prayers. Come, Lord, let us sit together now with you and 
find peace and contentment in our conversation. Amen. First reading comes from Luke, the 11th chapter. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. So Jesus said to them, Whenever you may pray, say, Father, your name has been sanctified. You have brought about your kingdom. Give us day to day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive all who are owing to us. And do not draw us into temptation. And Jesus said to them, which of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even if he will not get up and give him anything because he is a friend, because of his same shameless persistence, he will have been gotten up and give him as much as he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone asking receives, and everyone seeking finds, and everyone knocking, to them it will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, you will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will you give a scorpion? If you, then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask them? Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. I confess to Almighty God before the whole company of heaven and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned by my own deed, by my own fault, by my own most grievous, most grievous fault. Wherefore, I pray, God Almighty, to have mercy on me, forgive me all my sins,
Second reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the sixth chapter. Jesus taught, saying, Pay attention to not doing your righteousness before people for their perusal, for then you have no wages from your Father in heaven. So whenever you may give alms, you may not sound the trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be glorified by people. Most certainly, I say to you, they receive their wages. But as you are giving alms, do not let your left know what your right is doing, so that your arms, alms may be done cryptically. And your Father, who is seen cryptically, will read mercifully. And whenever you may pray, you will not be like the hypocrites, for they love to be standing and praying in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be dazzling people. Most certainly, I say to you, they receive their wages. But whenever you may pray, go into your inner room and having shut the door, pray to your father cryptically. And your father who is seeing cryptically will reimburse you. But when you are praying, you may not use the meaningless words repetitively as the Gentiles do, for they think that in their wordiness they will be heard. You may not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way. Our Father in the heavens, sanctify your name, bring your kingdom, do your will, as in heaven, so on earth. Give us our daily bread today, and forgive us our debts, as we have also forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the temptation, but rescue us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. But whenever you may fast, do not be like the hypocrites with dismally disfigured faces, so as to dazzle people with their fasting. Most certainly, I tell you, they receive their wages. But when you are fasting, anoint your head, wash your face, so that you do not dazzle people with your fasting, but by your Father who is cryptic, and your Father who sees cryptically, will reimburse you. The Gospel of the Lord.
Meditation on the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer, also called the Our Father, or in Latin, Oratio Dominica, or Pater Noster, is a Christian prayer that, according to tradition, was taught by Jesus to his disciples. It appears in two forms in the New Testament, the shorter version in the Gospel of Luke, according to Luke 11, and the longer version, part of the Sermon on the Mount, in the Gospel according to Matthew, the sixth chapter. In both contexts, it is offered as a model of how to pray. The Lord's Prayer resembles other prayers that came out of the Jewish matrix of Jesus' own time and contains three common elements of Jewish prayer, praise, petition, and a yearning for the coming kingdom of God. It consists of an introductory address and seven petitions. The Matthean version, used by the Roman Catholic Church, Protestants also add the following conclusion, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. This concluding doxology, a short formula of praise, in the Protestant version was probably added early in the Christian era since it occurs in some early manuscripts of the Gospels. Biblical scholars disagree about Jesus' meaning in the Lord's Prayer. Some view it as existential, referring to present human experience on earth, while others interpret it as eschatological, referring to the coming kingdom of God. The prayer lends itself to both interpretations, and further questions are posed by the existence of different translations and the problems inherent in the process of translation. In the case of the term daily bread, for example, the Greek word ton epiousion, which modifies our bread, has no known parable parallels in Greek writing and may have meant daily or for tomorrow. The petition, give us this day our daily bread, may thus be given the eschatological interpretation, give us today a foretaste of the heavenly banquet to come. This interpretation is supported by the Ethiopic versions and by St. Jerome's reference to the reading Bread of the Future in the Lost Gospel according to the Hebrews. The eschatological interpretation suggests that the Lord's Prayer may have been used in a Eucharistic setting in the early church. The prayer is recited before the Eucharist, even now in most Christian traditions. Thank you. 
Jesus, our hope. In you, we find the consolation with which God comes to flood our lives. And we understand that in prayer, we can bring everything to you, entrust everything to you. Jesus, our peace. By your gospel, you call us to be very simple, very humble. You cause to grow within us an infinite gratitude for your constant presence in our lives. God of consolation, even when we feel nothing of your presence, still, you are there. Your presence is invisible, but your Holy Spirit is always within us. Holy Spirit, you have a call for every one of us, so come, prepare our hearts to discover what it is that you expect of each of us. God of compassion, disconcerted by the incomprehensible suffering of the innocent, we pray for those who are experiencing time of trial. Inspire the hearts of those who seek the peace that is so indispensable for the whole of human God of consolation, you burden yourself with our burdens so that we can move forward at every moment from anxiety toward trust, from shadows toward light. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for the day, especially for the good we were permitted to give and to receive. The day is now past, and we commit it to you. We entrust to you the night. We rest in surety, for you are our help, and neither is slumber nor sleep. O oh Lord, support us all the day long of this troubled life, until the shadows lengthen, and the evening comes, and the busy world is hush. The fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then, O oh Lord, in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging, and a holy rest, and peace at the last. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this 